And tonight, a major developing story after the FBI raided the home of Project Veritas CEO and founder James O'Keefe, along with other Project Veritas journalists, as part of an investigation into a diary believed to have been written by Joe Biden's daughter, Ashley. Now, according to O'Keefe, within an hour of the first raid last week, the New York Times reached out for comment. Now, how did the Times know about the search warrant so quickly? I don't know. It's just one of many unanswered questions. Kind of sounds like that pre-dawn raid on Roger Stone. Fake news CNN cameras just happened to be there uh, at 5 o'clock in the morning. Anyway, here to explain more, his first interview, he is the CEO and founder of Project Veritas, James O'Keefe, along with his attorney, Paul uh, Calli, is with us. Uh, welcome, both of you. James, I think it's important to establish other media... And I'm not comparing you to other media, but other media use undercover cameras and have for many, many years, like even 60 Minutes and uh, NBC's To Catch a Predator, right? That this, this is not a new form of journalism. You acknowledge that? Well, Sean, on Saturday morning, uh, I acknowledge that, but I woke up to a pre-dawn raid uh, banging on my door. I went to the door to answer the door, and there were 10 FBI agents with a battering ram, uh, white blinding lights. They turned me around, handcuffed me, and threw me against the hallway. Uh, I was partially clothed in front of my neighbors. Uh, they confiscated my phone. They raided my apartment. On my phone were many of my reporter's notes, a lot of my sources unrelated to this story, and a lot of confidential donor information to our news organization, Sean. So I I've heard the phrase, the process is the punishment. I didn't really understand what that meant until this weekend. And, and Sean, I wouldn't wish this on any journalist. Let me, let me go into the issue. Like anybody that works in any form of, of journalism or in the press in any capacity, whether you're a talk show host like me or doing what you do or doing what anybody else does, in the course of doing your work, you have sources, correct? You have whistleblowers. You have people giving you tips all the time. To what extent can you tell us the context under which you were given this diary? I assume you did not take the diary yourself, did you not? Is that correct? That's correct. I'll speak to that, Sean, if I can. Um, an anonymous source contacted Project Veritas and indicated the source had in its lawful possession a copy of the diary that the source said belonged to Ashley Biden. Project Veritas had no prior contact with the source. The source had a lawyer. The lawyer engaged in negotiations with Veritas's in-house counsel in the resulting written agreement, like so many news organizations do. Veritas, uh, the, the, the source again, affirmed that it had lawful possession of the source material. In exchange for that, Veritas agreed to pay money for the right to publish the material. As you know, Sean, uh, Veritas never did. It killed the story on the newsroom floor. It went a step further, and it turned the material into local law enforcement. The actions of President Biden's Department of Justice in this case are unprecedented because there's let, let decades me, let me go of into Supreme this. Court precedent. J James, I've known you for a long time. You had no direct knowledge that what this source was giving you was, could in any way have been stolen. You, at, you were not able to corroborate the authenticity of the diary, and you never ran it. At what point, then, did you go to law enforcement on your own, unsolicited, and tell them that you had this in your possession and it might be somebody else's? Well, Sean, I mean, we, you know, we get uh, sources come to us all the time. We have thousands of sources come to Project Veritas, the routine nature of journalism to uh, to, to be shown information from a variety of sources. Um, but this is an attack on the First Amendment by the Department of Justice. Uh, we, we didn't, we didn't uh, publish the story. We, uh, we couldn't authenticate well, the story, so our journalists looked into it. We, couldn't, at we what did not point publish the story because we you, could not authenticate it. Which, by the way, if you can't authenticate it, then you, you did the right thing. At what point did you feel a need to bring this to law enforcement? At what point in the process did that happen? After the decision was made to kill the story and not run it. I, I got to add one thing, if I could, Sean. You used the S word. 
it's really important to understand not to buy the premise that the diary's stolen. I, it, no, nobody. Well, that nobody was my next knows question. If that's the case, I, I, I have been reading all over the, the internet, everywhere in between, that she claims it was stolen, but other people claim it might have been left in a, a, a former place of residence of hers. Do we have an answer to that question? We do, but you know, I think people might look at me and say that I'm crazy for talking about the facts at the level I have already, and so I'm going to respectfully say that's going to come out. It's going to be awfully favorable to James and awfully favorable to his news organization. Well, I think but it's awfully I, interesting I that limit. James is the one that brought it to law enforcement's attention. Let me ask this question. What is the alleged crime that they have here? I don't know. This was they didn't tell you? turned in a year ago. Well... The search warrant has misprison of a felony, accessory after the fact, and transporting material across state lines as the basis for raiding the home of a journalist and seizing his work papers and journalist notes. Um, I would assume both of you are pretty familiar with, with Daniel Ellsberg and the Pentagon Papers case and the New York Times obtaining uh, stolen top secret documents that they were publishing. They actually set a precedent in the U.S. Supreme Court in a 6 3 decision that said they had the right to publish it, even though that was stolen material. Do you see some of the rights to publish? The right. To, it's, a, it's entirely similar. There's no exception to Mr. O'Keefe and Project Veritas. The right to take the material knowing it was stolen the right to seek comment, the right to investigate, and ultimately the right to publish. This is outrageous and unprecedented. And journalists did, everywhere on either why, side. Why, if you went to authorities a year ago, if I'm understanding you correctly, why did this come up now? James? Listen, I'm... James, go ahead. I'm sorry, Sean. I, I don't know the answer to that, Sean, but this is... Um, they've crossed the bridge here. Uh, of, <laughs> if they can do this to me... Um, these are about certain principles that are so fundamental, our First Amendment in this country. I, I'm calling upon all journalists to, to take a stand against this. A source comes to us with information. I don't even decide to publish it. If they can do this to me, if they can do this to this journalist and raid my home and take my reporter notes, they'll do it to any journalist. This is about something very fundamental in this country. Uh, I, I don't know what direction this country is going in. But, 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 but journalists everywhere have to rise up because we broke no laws here. They could do it to me, they'll do it to anybody. So when they came to your house in this pre-dawn raid and they threw handcuffs on you and pulled you out of your house and 10 agents go inside, um, were you just, when they, I assume they took items out of your house and office as I understand it, uh, at that point, did they just take the handcuffs off and say, see you later? They spent uh, about over two hours in my, uh, my apartment, and they confiscated two of my iPhones. And again, these phones contained a lot of source information and reporter notes on them. Uh, these are serious First Amendment issues uh, and, and, and donor information to our news foundation. So yeah, it's, it's troubling. Um, and uh, I, I, I asked to speak with my attorney a, a few times. They, they allowed me to do that. But uh, I, I was kind of in a state of uh, shock, frankly. I, <laughs> I, I can't believe this is happening. Well, let me, let me go back. I'm trying to understand this. So a year prior, you go to law enforcement on your own, that you have a source, gives you information, you don't know where it came from, you try to corroborate it, you're unable to do so, issues arise as to where, where this might have come from. You, on your own a year prior, go to law enforcement. Did you hand over to them at the time this, this diary? And did you have any indication where the diary Correct. came from? James? Came from the source, Sean, as I said. The, it, you, the source gave us the information, and, and uh, we, didn't, we didn't know if it was stolen or not. We don't know that. Um, I would assume uh, that but journalists you're gonna... throughout the 20th century have been uh, journalists throughout the 20th century have been given information. You know, the Washington Post and the New York Times are given information inside 
all manner of institutions, and they're protected by the Supreme Court of the United States to publish that information that a source gives to them. So did there's no distinction between. The, did they ask you for the name of the source? Are you going to protect that source? Well, insofar as they have my reporter's notes on the phone they confiscated from the pre dawn raid, they have access to the contents of my iPhone, which is deeply troubling and should outrage the ACLU and any other journalist in the United States. They well, have hold access your breath, to James. They don't all care. of the contents from my phone. Uh, believe me, if, if, Look, if I it's sent not. Them a letter. I, I, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, Paul. Sorry. I sent him a I'll letter. Give you the last word. I, let him, I sent him a letter. I sent him a letter. I let him know that I represent James, and the, the, in the normal course, the material on the phone that they're entitled to have uh, would have been produced promptly. Um, it's the other material on there uh, that is deeply troubling. This is they the First Amendment. It's an assault. Would ahead, this, sorry, on a scale of 1 to 10, how damaging, if this turned out to be true, you haven't been able to authenticate it, if it turned out to be true, how damaging would this be to the president and his family? James? Look, you know the answer to that? Well, I mean, I think, I think I, again, I, I couldn't authenticate the source material. I had a newsroom at the time. We were looking through it for a, a little while. We, we couldn't authenticate it, so I decided not to run it. And I'm trying to figure out what more we could have done as journalists. What, what, what more could I have done but not run the story and hand it over to law enforcement? I don't know what more we could have done. And, and so we decided not to publish the story. So what, what on earth, what, what, what action could we have taken as reporters beyond the action that we've I, taken? I, I, you're, to be you're shown raising information a great question. And decide and not to did, publish. And why did it take a year? Um, all right, we're going to continue to follow the story. James O'Keefe, thank you. Paul, thank you for being with us. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.